Hi friends, Crystal here and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to show you how I turned five pounds of hamburger into four different meals that fed us for eight different nights. Uh, it's a great way to stretch out the food budget and to be frugal with the resources that you have. Uh, I really enjoyed this little batch of cooking. Um, I had no problem with the hamburger lasting uh, about a week in the refrigerator. If you're concerned, you can always freeze it, freeze half of it and pull it out later. I'm hoping that these meals give you some cooking inspiration. I often don't follow a recipe when I make them. I just kind of throw them together. When you've been cooking for enough, enough years, uh, you kind of get an idea of what you want. Uh, if there are any recipes, I certainly will post them in the links below. At the end of the video is a bonus recipe that I will have posted below, and that is for some garlic cheese biscuits. They're really simple to put together, and they go great as a side dish with um, a lot of different meals, especially soup meals. I, I have a one-pot pasta hamburger dish at the end of the video, and that's what I serve them with. And one more little tip for you if you're cooking hamburger in a big batch is that uh, once it's cooked, approximately two and a half cups of cooked hamburger is equal to one pound of hamburger. So if you're using a recipe, you can just easily know that two and a half cups equals the one pound called for in your recipe. I've been doing this way of meal prepping where I just kind of cook up all the meat at once and then use that throughout the next week, and I'm absolutely loving it. In fact, right now I have a pot of chicken thighs and breasts, and I'm getting ready to do it again, so that'll probably be a future video. In the meantime, let's get cooking, and I'll show you what I did with all that hamburger. I began by taking out my five pounds of hamburger that I had defrosted in the refrigerator and started cooking that. I just did some basic seasonings with this, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic, and some seasoned salt. I cooked that until it was completely done and then I drained off the grease. I took my, ha my hamburger at that point and put it into a little tray that I had to put in the refrigerator. The first meal that I made that night, I made some tater tot casserole. And basically I did the standard type of recipe, although instead of the cream of mushroom soup, I used some Alfredo sauce that I had in my cupboard. Uh, I also used this Mexican blend cheese, but you can use whatever cheese that you like. I began by putting two cups of hamburger into the bottom of my nine inch square pan. I topped that with the can of green beans that I had drained and a little bit of the cheese. You can use as much or as little as you want, it's just to your own preference. Then I put the Alfredo sauce. And like I said, this I really enjoyed it with this. I was just trying to use it. I had it on my shelf. Uh, you can easily just take a can of cream of mushroom soup and dilute that till it's about as thick as what you see there and put that over the top. Then I just covered the top with some tater tots, generic brand, uh, store brand, and then topped that with extra cheese. My cheese was kind of frozen, so I was breaking it up as I put it on the top. I baked that in the oven at about 350 degrees, probably for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that, till it was nice and golden brown and everything was bubbly. I have to say we really, really enjoyed this. It was a real game changer to put the Alfredo sauce instead of the cream of mushroom. It just added a whole different level of flavor. And I will certainly be trying that again at some point. This casserole ended up feeding us for two nights. And I served it with a salad on the side. The next meal that I made with my hamburger was stuffed manicotti. I began by, of course, pulling out my hamburger. And I still had quite a bit left, as you can see. I had an 8-ounce package of manicotti noodles. And then I began chopping up some vegetables. I was going to be making a basically a pasta sauce, spaghetti sauce. And I just used vegetables that I had in the refrigerator. An onion, a half a pepper, some mushrooms, and I grated one carrot to put in it too. In my four quart stock pot, I put a little oil and all those vegetables and I cooked those up until all the vegetables were nice and soft. I added a 24 ounce can of spaghetti sauce. You could use your favorite type or make your own. I also added six ounces of tomato paste.
and one cup of water. I did end up adding another half a cup. Uh, I wanted my sauce to be kind of liquidy. I seasoned that with salt and garlic and a nice big tablespoon of Italian seasonings. And I let that cook and come to a boil. There's the other half cup of water I ended up adding because I felt like it wasn't thin enough. And covered that up and just let that simmer for a little bit. Now I was going to make my filling for the manicotti noodles. I put about two and a half cups of hamburger into my bowl. I also added one cup of cottage cheese. And I added about a cup, a nice heaping cup of mozzarella cheese. Obviously I didn't measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it. I mixed all that up and added just a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic to that. Now my sauce was nice and bubbly and ready to go and I took a couple scoops of that and spread it around the bottom of my 9 by 13 pan. And I got ready to fill my manicotti noodles. And you, as you can see, I did not cook them ahead of time, which is one reason why I wanted the sauce to be kind of thin so that the noodles could cook while it all baked. I began by filling it with a spoon, uh, just trying to be, I guess, you know, good for the camera, but I found that it was taking me forever to fill those up. So then I just decided, well, skip that with my nice clean hands. I stuffed it and that worked a whole lot better, went a whole lot faster. I just filled each of those manicotti noodles and laid them out into my pan. I had a little bit of the filling left over, so I just kind of spread that over the top. Then I scooped out all my, the rest of my sauce and just covered the top of the, the noodles that way. I then added some foil to the top of the pan and put that into the oven. I let that cook for about 30 minutes and of course covered up my hamburger and put that back in the refrigerator for another meal. After 30 minutes, the noodles were probably about halfway cooked, uh, but I decided to add the cheese at that point. And again, just top it with as much or as little cheese as you like. I put the foil back on and put that back into the oven and let that cook for another 30 minutes. So in all, I cooked it for about an hour at 350. Basically, just cook it until your noodles are soft. Uh, this meal lasted us for two nights, plus we had a little leftovers on the third night. I served, served it with some toasted bread and a side salad. I wanted to make a little note about this manicotti recipe. So if a 9 by 13 pan is more than you think you're going to want to eat, you don't want to eat it for three nights in a row or something like that, uh, one of the things that I have done in the past, and it works really great, is after you fill the manicotti shells, you can flash freeze them. And I do that simply by getting a cookie sheet out, laying them on the cookie sheet so they're not touching, and put it into the freezer. Once they're frozen, they can go into a Ziploc bag, and then at any point you can pull them out and make as many as you want, or whatever size casserole dish you want to fill with them. So that works really well. They may have to cook a little bit longer if you're putting them in and they are frozen. The next meal was super easy. One of my husband's favorites was tacos. You can see I still have that much meat left. I began by chopping up an onion and heating up uh, my frying pan. I measured out two cups of the hamburger and then I cooked the onions and a little bit of oil until they were soft and added the hamburger. I added two tablespoons of taco seasoning bulk that's less than, probably less than one package of taco seasoning. I also added just a little bit of water so it could kind of simmer, maybe a quarter cup. And I added about a quarter cup of salsa. You can use your favorite. It just gives it a nice added bit of flavor. And those tacos fed us for one night. Next, I moved on to a one-pot hamburger noodle dinner. It's really nice to be able to put everything into one pot and you've got dinner. I had that much hamburger, which ended up being about a cup and a half, two cups. I pulled out some veggies, a little bit of frozen veggies, and I had a half a bag of egg noodles. It was probably a 16-ounce bag, maybe. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember now. I uh, 
prepared all my vegetables, heated up my Dutch oven with a little bit of olive oil, and then cooked all those vegetables until they were almost tender. And then I added in about a cup of frozen peas and carrots and then continued to cook that. I put in a, three cups of broth. You can use beef broth, chicken broth, you can use vegetable broth, you could use water and bouillon, whatever your choice is. Added some seasonings to that and let that come to a boil. Now I was ready to add my hamburger, so I added the rest of the hamburger that I had left. I covered that and let it come back to a boil, and at that point I just added in my package of noodles. I ended up adding a little bit of extra water. You want to make sure that your noodles are pretty well submerged when you get to this point. I, then I put the lid on and brought that to a boil. I stirred that and checked it a few times. You don't want to run out of water, but your objective is to have just enough to uh, cook everything and not have too much liquid left over. I was looking for more of a casserole consistency rather than soup. This dinner was very good and it fed us for two nights. I topped it with a little bit of sour cream and served it with a salad on the side and some garlic cheese biscuits. These biscuits go together really quick and are very good. The unusual ingredient in them is some mayonnaise. You mix in the mayonnaise and milk, a little bit of sugar, flour, some baking powder, salt, just kind of your basics. This is going to be more of a drop biscuit than a roll-out biscuit. I mix it together with my mixer until it's kind of got a nice thick consistency like you see here. I add a little bit of cheese and kind of fold all that in. I cook these in a muffin pan. After I've divided the dough between the 12 muffin individual muffin pans. I melt some butter and add garlic to that, stir that up, and just kind of spoon that over all of the biscuits. Bake that in the oven, and there they are. Absolutely delicious. And that is what I served along with my one pot noodle hamburger dinner and my salad. All right, you guys, I hope that that gives you some meal planning and meal cooking inspiration for your own menus. And I really appreciate you being here and watching my video. Please don't forget to give it a like and, uh, and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet and you like my content. That really helps me a lot too. Alrighty, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.